I've been loving your recent like content that I've been learning and listening to about the sprint intervals. What's your take on that for uh, versus like doing lists and doing steady state cardio? So I don't want to take away people's soul food, right? Yeah. And when we're looking at it, people like to do low intensity work because it's a social thing and it's a stress relief. That's fine. But when it comes down to the bread and butter, what we're trying to do with regards to maximizing cognition and looking at attenuating any kind of cognitive decline, as well as better metabolic health and body composition, we have to put in that sprint interval. So it's, it's that balance, right? It's like, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of sprints. I like the feeling afterwards, but I know how beneficial it is. So I'm going to do it. But then on the weekend, I'm out on my bike for hours with friends because it's fun and it's social. So mm-hmm. that's what I mean. It's like, pick your quality during the week if you can. And then you want to find that soul food as the way to feed your soul, but not to be the be all end all of what you're doing. Amen. I love that. And I love it so much more too, because you have that endurance background. So you can speak to like blending in the best of both worlds. And I find that when people, women in particular, when they're in their mid forties and they used to do endurance, now they get into it and they're like, I feel slow. I don't feel like I can run. I can't ride very well. I don't know what's going on. And they become disenchanted with what they used to love. It's like, well, let's just pull it back. Don't do it every day. Don't do it for hours and hours. Let's pull it back. Let's look at the quality. Let's look at where you want to go and you can find your soul food again. Yeah. One last question on training, and then I want to dive into the bucket of nutrition. Is there a best time like to train based on the hormone fluctuations that we expect? Say we're not in perimenopause or menopause, like the the fluctuations that maybe like a normal, not normal. That sounds terrible. You know what I mean? We're still getting our reproductively, yes, still in the reproductive years. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there a best time to train like during that during those cycles that we go through on a monthly basis? Yeah. So the science has evolved over the past six years, which I'm happy to see because now we have more and more research on women. And part of it is we know from a molecular standpoint, what happens when we have low estrogen progesterone. And this is when we can really go hard. We recover well. We have all these great things going for us, including our immune system. Then after ovulation, we start to have a change. We have to be a little bit more cognizant of what we're doing, but we don't know when people ovulate. Even women don't really realize if they ovulate or not because they're, you'll still have a bleed, but the bleed pattern might be a little bit different. Okay. So what we're saying now from a applied sports science point of view is we want you to track and understand how you feel across the cycle because that gives you more insight and also empowers you to know, well, I really have this training session that I want to do and it's really high intense and I want to nail it, but it kind of falls around the time where I always feel a bit flat. So I'm going to move that. So you still have the opportunity to do that session and get the training benefit, but you don't have to do it on a day where you're fighting it. So, you know, you find your own patterns because some women feel really awful mid cycle and then they start to feel better on either end. And then some women like feel really bad the week before their period starts. So it's like, let's not fight it. Let's really understand how we feel and how our body is responding to these hormone fluxes and dial it in that way.